Hi friends, this is Lauren Taylor here on the Pear Blossom Press YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today. I'm going to be making a fun lava lamp groovy themed light up card with Pear Blossom Press twinkle lights. I'm going to start with making my inky background by doing some ink smushing or squishing or however you like to call this technique by adding distress oxides to my glass mat, spraying it with water, and then picking up that watery ink with my watercolor panel that I have cut down to four by five and a quarter. Between different layers of ink, I will use my heat gun on the lower setting to dry my cardstock so that way I can layer the inks on top of each other. That's one of the great things about Distress Oxides is that you can layer them in not only the same color but other colors as well. So I've started off with picked raspberry and then I'm going to move on to my next color which is going to be carved pumpkin. I had looked up pictures of lava lamps to inspire my color choices today. So these were the colors that I thought would look really well on the background. I do think cracked pistachio kind of muddied my background just a tiny bit but I still really like how it all turns out. So just make sure you're using your color theory and your color wheels so you know what colors complement each other when you do ink smushing like this. So after I've done carved pumpkin, I wanted a little bit more of that orange than what I had. So I just picked up a paintbrush and splattered it on and then using my towel to kind of pat up the excess water. Now I'm going to move into cracked pistachio. I'm only going to have a little bit, like I said, as I started using it, I felt like it kind of muddied my background a bit. Definitely pink and green create brown, so I didn't do too much, just a little bit to bring in some of that green into the background. Once again, I'll use my heat gun to dry that before moving on to my final color, which will be Villainous Potion. For this one, I'm going to, um, again, just put it onto my glass board and spray it, but I'm not going to do as much color like I did with the pink and the orange. I'm just trying to get it onto the edges of my panel, and then I will also use my paintbrush to do a little bit of splattering so I can get more of that purple throughout the background. I think the pink ended up being my favorite color that I use, so I will bring in my picked raspberry again with a blending buddy brush, and I'm going to use that ink along the edges of the panel. Just trying to cover up any areas where I still had some white that didn't make it from all of that ink squishing, and to also just kind of frame the colors by having that pink color on all four sides of this panel. I'll go ahead and set it aside to dry for just a bit and then we'll move on to the next part of our card. I'm going to be using images from the Avriel stamp set Groovy Vibes, but I'm going to be stamping first the lava lamp three times on a piece of alcohol marker friendly cardstock and using a black ink that is also alcohol marker friendly and I'm going to be using my Olo markers to color them in. I'm going to use some cool grays to color in what I would think would be the metal parts of our lava lamp. So just going to show you how I colored in one part, but I will use that on all three lamps. Now the different color combinations I saw when I was looking at pictures of lava lamps were teal and purple, blue and green, and red and orange, or more of a pinky red than orange, which is what inspired my colors on my background. I decided not to include blue. I thought it would just be a little too much, or I was worried that the blue and orange would get muddy, although I did end up getting a little bit of brown because I left green in the color combination. But overall, I like these colors a lot. They just felt very, uh, well, groovy, hence the sentiment from my Groovy Vibe stamp set and dies from, again, Avery L. I just thought it was a lot of fun and I had a good time using these bright colorful colors together. I just got these Olo markers so it's also been fun to color and learn each of the different color families and just having fun with these markers. So I really enjoy just coloring these simple images in. I'm only using two tones for everything, a dark and a medium. I didn't really want to go too crazy with my coloring since these images were pretty simple and the focus of the card is going to be that it lights up, not so much the detailed coloring of, uh, you know, blobs <laughs> inside of a lava lamp. So I'll just go ahead and finish coloring these up 
quickly. I decided not to do any white gel highlights. I just didn't really think about it at the time. And then once I finished putting my card together, I just liked how it looked on its own because I really have a lot of colorful vibes in the background. I just wanted to keep that consistent look, I guess, through the photos. So here I am with the last lava lamp. Like I said, I looked up some cool photos of lava lamps and I really liked this one. It kind of gave an earthy vibe with the blue and the green. Um, but I, I want to know if you've ever had a lava lamp. I've never had one. My daughter's made like a science experiment version of a lava lamp where it's not really a lava lamp because there's no heat. But I think they're pretty fun and I think they would be really cool. I think I should go in for my craft room. <laughs> I used the coordinating die from the Elements die set to cut out my lava lamps, and I'm also going to use it for my sentiment. I am just going to use the groovy sentiment. There is a word die and a shadow die, and I'm going to use the word die and cut it out directly out of this panel. And I'm still going to use this uh, ink blended panel on my card as is because I will use the shadow die in white which is larger than the word die so when I layer my sentiment back onto this panel it's going to cover what I've already die cut because of that white shadow border. So I'm going to go ahead and prep my sentiments. I will end up cutting two more groovy words out later out of just some um, spare white cardstock, scrap white cardstock, that was the word I was looking for, scrap, to just give it a little bit more of a pop-up off of the card. But here you can see how that white shadow is going to cover what I've already die cut. So I'm doing a dry run of how my sentiment and my lava lamps are going to look on my card so I know where to pierce my holes for my twinkle lights. I have my panel on a piece of really thick foam that I use for when I do piercing and I'm using a pencil to mark where I need to pierce the holes so the light comes up from the bottom of the lava lamps. I also later will get everything laid out correctly so I know where my push button needs to be as well. So I have those three dots where I used a pencil and I'm just using a piercing or a poking tool to poke those three holes into that panel and into my thick piece of foam so I don't damage my craft desk. I have a top folding A2 card so I am going to um, use this as my card base. So I need to know where my LEDs are going to go so I use my pencil and marked onto the card base where those three lights will connect or where I will tape them onto the card base um, since I already pierced those holes. I have the twinkle lights, I have a three pack and I'm going to get my battery out so I can play with the new twinkle lights. This is my first time using the new version where they all twinkle at different intervals, which I think is so cool. It's very random feeling. And here I'm going to figure out where my push button's going to go. I'm going to stamp the word push just under the groovy sentiment, just so the card receiver knows that this card is interactive. So I want it in the center of the card just under the word groovy. So I'm using my grid mat and my pencil and my battery pack to kind of figure out exactly where my push button needs to go. So I'm hovering my pencil over and I'm moving everything out of the way because I just need to know where to attach the battery pack onto my card base. I'm using some double sided adhesive. This is rip and tear tape and I'm just going to apply that to the back of the battery pack peel off the release paper, and then I'll go ahead and get this onto my car base, making sure to line up that button, the push button, where I drew that little dot with my pencil. Now I can use some clear tape to help me with attaching my LEDs to the car base. This is just regular old scotch tape that I have on a tape dispenser I keep on my desk. I don't know why I took out a piece of tape that long. I was thinking in my head I need enough for three LEDs, but I could have just taken three pieces of tape instead of one long one, but that's okay. I'm just going to use my scissors to trim them down. I'm making sure my LEDs are pointing up and away from the card. I don't want the LEDs facing the card, they won't be as bright. So just making sure I have the LEDs twisted and I'm just using that clear tape to tape them in place right where those dots were that I drew with my pencil. 
I'm also going to carefully twist and curl my extra wires, making sure not to do any harsh bending, um, just making sure that those wires are snug in place with tape, but also not going to cause any damage to the circuit. And of course, we have to test the light constantly, <laughs> make sure everything looks good. And I'm happy with how everything's placed, so we'll go ahead and grab our world's best foam tape and add it to the back of our colorful panel. I'm gonna trim the tape in half where it needs to go under the battery pack. I think it would have been fine, but I didn't want to risk my tape going into the area where I need my battery pack to be. So I'm just going to add a thinner layer of tape on the bottom of the panel and then fill up the rest with the regular width of again, the world's best foam tape. So now I'll go ahead and center this onto my card base because it should line up perfectly where I want my press button to be and where my LEDs are that will shine through those lights that I, or those lights, the openings that I made on my panel. Now that the guts of our card are all put together, let's work on assembling the rest. So I'm going to first add some liquid adhesive to my white shadow. I'm not really sure why I put so much glue on when there's a lot of space because I die cut a word out of the panel. I should have focused more on just the outside, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I cover that hole that I die cut from the word groovy with this white shadow die piece. And once I have that in place, I'll go ahead and like I said, I'm gonna cut two more of those groovy pieces out of some scrap white cardstock, and I'm going to layer all three together with liquid adhesive. And this is just gonna help our sentiment pop off the card just a bit without having to use up too much foam tape or take the time to really get that foam tape to fit nicely in those fancy, uh, in the fancy font of our groovy sentiment. So I'll just layer all three of those together and then glue this to the white shadow that I already have on my card base. I really like using this little precision glue gun, especially with this fine point tip, it makes it nice and easy to glue these sentiments in place. After that, we're going to move on to adding in our lava lamps. I'm going to use my same glue and glue down all three of these lamps covering up the holes and doing my best to make sure I have those lights lined up towards the bottom of my lamps. I'm not putting any glue over the hole. I'm just going on the top and bottom of the lava lamp and then just around the sides. I'll make sure I have my finger on the push button as I glue each of these lamps down to make sure I have them placed so I can see the lights um, they're activated while I glue it in place to make sure I have the alignment where I want it. Once I have everything in place, I'm going to play around with my lights even more. And this is when I realized I completely forgot to stamp the word push on my panel before gluing everything down. I got really excited. But that's okay. I'm going to grab push from the Pear Blossom Press Stamp and Die Bundle and use my VersaFine ink. And luckily it worked out perfectly. <laughs> I was able to stamp my push sentiment with no issues. Now the more I was looking at my card, the more I just felt like it was missing something. So I thought I would grab the peace sign from the Groovy Vibe set from Avery L, which is where I've gotten everything so far. And I'm doing a little, I guess it's called second generation stamping if I remember correctly, where I add ink to the stamp. I stamp it off on some scrap paper and then stamp a couple times on my background. So it's a little softer, it's not as bold of a stamp. And I just went kind of randomly around the border of the card, making sure not to get any on my white border of my uh, background, my card base. And I think it looks pretty good. It just added a little more interest, added a little bit more black since I have the black on the outline of the stamp and the push. And then I also added a few of one of my favorite confettis from Trinity Stamps with the white sparkle spots, flat confetti embellishment mix. Here is a look at the card. Of course, with the lights off, it's so much brighter and so much more exciting. It's really hard to take a photo of a light up card in the light, <laughs> but I hope you had fun with this uh, stamp set along with the twinkle lights. I had a lot of fun making it. You can find a list of the supplies I used to make this card down below in the description. We hope that you'll subscribe if you're new here. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit that like button. Here's even more inspiration for you to check out. Bye.